In this video, we'll discuss the story that occurred in 2017 in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania. On June 28, 2017, eyewitnesses started calling 911 and reporting a car accident on one of the highways. When police arrived at the scene, they found a Chevy Malibu car that had veered off the road. Unfortunately, the driver, 18-year-old Bianca Roberson, did not survive. However, her death was not an accident, as it seemed at first glance. Bianca Nicole Roberson was born on October 17, 1998, in Pennsylvania. She graduated from Bayard Ruston High School in Westchester with straight A's. As a student at Ruston, Bianca was a member of the Black Student Union, received several awards, and was on the honor roll throughout her senior year. She received a four-year merit scholarship to Jacksonville University in Jacksonville, Florida, aspiring to major in criminal justice to become an FBI forensic agent. Over the years, she was a Girl Scout, a cheerleader, and played basketball. She took lessons for flute, violin, clarinet, and guitar. She was also an artist. Bianca, who resided with her mother and her maternal grandmother, Josephine Perry, was eager to experience the freedoms and challenges of dorm life, her mother said. Unfortunately, all her plans collapsed. On June 28, 2017, Bianca, her mother, and her grandmother were shopping at Walmart. Bianca was preparing to move to Florida and looking forward to a new chapter in her life. Having bought everything, Bianca and her family went to the parking lot. Each of them got into a separate car. They planned to meet at home later. Her mother and grandmother had other things to do, and Bianca immediately went home. She had to drive about 10 miles. Bianca knew this road well, yet this car ride was the last for the young woman. About 10 minutes after she left the Walmart parking lot, eyewitnesses of the accident started calling 911. The first responders went to the scene right away. The driver of the Chevy Malibu was Bianca Roberson. The paramedics could not help her. She was pronounced dead at the scene. At first glance, the injuries on Bianca's head indicated that she had received a severe blow when the car veered off the road. Many people driving along the highway at the time of the accident stopped near the scene even before the police and ambulance arrived. After interviewing eyewitnesses, the police found out one crucial detail. One of the witnesses claimed that Bianca went off the road after a collision with a red pickup truck, which then fled the scene without even stopping. I hope it's not Bianca. That's what the grandmother said to herself as she drove past the car crash scene, intending to meet her granddaughter at home. She had no idea that the cause of the traffic she got stuck in was the crash involving her granddaughter. By the time Bianca's grandmother returned home, two police officers were already there to report the car accident that claimed her granddaughter's life. Bianca's mother, Michelle, couldn't believe all this was happening to her. The death of a child is perhaps the worst thing that can happen to parents. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine anything like this, said Michelle, a nurse in Delaware County. After losing her son, 22-year-old Mickle James Rowley, to a heart condition in 2013, she truly believed her pain would lessen. Instead, it has doubled. I don't even know who I am right now. I am just existing, Michelle said. They were my breath, my reason to get up. I'm the mom of no children now. Michelle Robertson has lost her second child, and all this is heartbreaking. She said she did not leave the house for quite some time and constantly cried. Divorced since 2006, Michelle and Rodney Robertson managed to become amicable co-parents, thanks to Bianca. Our divorce wasn't pleasant, Rodney admitted. Bianca didn't like the way I was talking to her mother, and she set me straight. Because of the love we had for her, it made everything calm down. Bianca was devoted to family, and she especially loved being her daddy's girl. If I had a favorite, Bianca was it, her father said. Even more than looking forward to being on her own, her parents said Bianca was happy to be moving closer toward achieving her dream of being a forensic specialist for the FBI. 
She was focused on her future and nothing was going to get in her way, said Bianca's father, proudly adding that his daughter had received a four-year merit scholarship for Jacksonville University, one of four schools to which she applied and one of three where she had been accepted. She also was accepted to Coastal Carolina and the University of Georgia. Detectives requested CCTV footage to verify the version that Bianca's car veered off the road after a collision with a red pickup truck. After all, if the cause of Bianca's death was a collision with another car, then it wasn't just an accident. It was a crime. If this was the case, the police needed to find the culprit. But the truth they soon discovered was even more shocking. While the detectives were waiting for the footage, there was another turning point in this case. Everyone thought Bianca died after going off the road and hitting her head. But during the autopsy, forensic experts determined that the cause of her death wasn't a car crash. They found a bullet in Bianca's head. It radically changed everything. What initially looked like an accident and then a collision with a red pickup truck was actually death from a gunshot wound to the head. After receiving the autopsy report, the detectives went to meet Bianca's family. They had to tell Bianca's parents that her death was not an accident. It was an even bigger shock for everyone, especially her mother. Michelle was confused. Why would anyone do such a thing to her daughter? The family could not name a single person who could wish Bianca harm. She had friendly relations with everyone. Robertson's needed answers and investigators were doing everything possible to find the person responsible for Bianca's death. The detectives did not see anything suspicious while reviewing the footage from cameras at Walmart that Bianca and her family visited on the day of her death. They analyzed their every move from when Bianca and her family exited their cars to when they left the parking lot. The detectives ruled out the version that someone who was at Walmart could have chased Bianca and then fired a fatal shot at her. After all, while at Walmart, she did not quarrel with anyone. They just bought everything they needed, loaded everything into Bianca's car, and left. It could mean the reason for Bianca's death was something that happened while she was driving along the highway in the direction of her house. We put all the bags in Bianca's car, her mother said referring to the 2009 Chevy Malibu the family bought for Bianca from CarMax for her 16th birthday. Bianca didn't ask for a lot, but when she did, she asked for big things, like a car, her mother said, adding that Bianca had picked out the car when she got her permit. She got everything she wanted, Michelle Robertson said. I don't call it spoiled, I call it loved. But Bianca was willing to work for things she wanted. She got her first job at McDonald's at the age of 15. After two weeks, she traded in fast food for a dietary aid position at the Whitehorse Village Retirement Community in Delaware County. I have a stack of letters and cards from the residents there who loved Bianca, Michelle said. Soon after, the police obtained the traffic CCTV footage. There were no cameras at the place where Bianca veered off the road, but there was one about a mile away. Let's look at Google Maps. Here is where Bianca went off the road. As you can see, two lanes merge into one at this point. When the investigators watched the recording, they saw something that confirmed the story about Bianca having some conflict situation with the driver of the red pickup truck. The footage showed their cars driving side by side. Here, they're approaching the place where the two lanes merge into one. Perhaps the conflict arose because one did not give way to the other. Knowing the outcome of this confrontation, the investigators assumed that the driver of the red pickup truck could be the one who fired the fatal shot. Unfortunately, the footage was of poor quality. Neither the license plates of the pickup truck nor the driver's face were visible. However, from that moment on, the driver of the red pickup truck became the primary and only suspect in the case of Bianca Roberson's death. Detectives had to find out the identity of this man, but all they had at that moment was a blurry image. None of Bianca's family members knew anyone who owned a red pickup truck. The police again talked to those who were at the scene of the incident and those who called 911. None of them saw the license plate of this car. 
Friends and strangers, young and old, too many to count, have reached out to the Robersons in support, beginning at a vigil held two days after her death. They've heard from teachers who had known Bianca over the years. Bianca changed me and how I was going to teach, one educator told Michelle. Bianca was our save the world child. If a parent put a child out, Bianca would sneak them into our house, Michelle said. When she confronted her, Bianca would say something like, Mom, wouldn't you want someone to do the same for me? Bianca once saw a car accident and asked her mother if they could stop to help. If she saw anyone dining alone, her first instinct was to invite them to the family table. While watching the recordings from cameras located further from where Bianca's car crashed, the investigators established in which direction the pickup truck was moving after the incident. They needed a higher quality recording to know the car's brand, model, and license plate. The police also appealed to the media to spread information about the red pickup truck, hoping the public would help identify its owner. Detectives established that after an incident, the driver of a red pickup truck turned towards Pauley Pike. They started going around houses and various shopping facilities in the area, searching for cameras that could have captured the pickup truck. They managed to find one surveillance camera and the footage was of good quality this time. While analyzing the recording, detectives saw a red pickup truck driving along the road about five minutes after witnesses called 911 and reported an accident involving Bianca Roberson's car. Yet it was not possible to see the license plate. Moreover, it was unclear whether it was the same car or another one that fit the description. While the investigators continued to look for other recordings and go from one door to the other, there was another breakthrough in the case. Two days after the incident, a woman contacted the police, saying she had seen the car they were looking for. Moreover, she even saw the face of the person sitting behind the wheel. This woman said a red pickup truck overtook her, stopped at the Powley Pike intersection, and then turned left. This information was crucial to the investigation because it narrowed the search circle. Moreover, it meant that the pickup truck from this footage wasn't the car they were looking for. It was just a similar looking truck. The woman who contacted the police helped the forensic artist to create the suspect's sketch. She described him as a white male, aged 25 to 35 years, with brown hair and a stubble beard. The police hoped that someone would recognize this person and inform them about it. They showed the suspect's sketch to Bianca's family. However, they didn't know anyone who looked similar to the sketch. The investigators also began to assume that Bianca's death could have been a hate crime. Knowing that the red pickup truck turned left at this intersection, the detectives went around the establishments and houses on this street, hoping to find a good quality recording that could answer some of their questions. Soon, they found what they were looking for. The owner of the house, located less than half a mile from the intersection, provided the police with a recording from the surveillance camera aimed at his driveway. Having determined the approximate time it would take to get there from the crime scene, the police quickly found the needed car. Although the footage had better quality than the previous one, its angle of view prevented the law enforcement officers from identifying the car or the driver. The police made a lot of effort to find another recording from the camera located at a closer distance, and luck was on their side. While they couldn't see the license plate, they did discover the car's distinctive features. Namely, the car had a sticker on the right side window, a vertical dent on the passenger door, and damage to the hood. These distinctive features could greatly simplify the search for this car. The police wanted to speed up the process so they appealed to the public for help through the mass media. They offered a $5,000 reward for information that could help find the truck or its driver. The investigators were sure that someone would definitely recognize this particular vehicle. Three days after Bianca Robertson died, 
A lawyer called the police station and said he had a client who wanted to turn himself in, mentioning the latter's connection with an incident that resulted in the death of 18-year-old Bianca Roberson. This incident happened this past Wednesday at approximately 5.30 p.m. Bianca Roberson, 18 years old, recently graduated from Westchester Ruston High School, on her way to Jacksonville University. Her whole summer in front of her, her whole life in front of her, a loving family. She was driving down Route 100. Route 100 is a two-lane highway, the Route 100 spur, just a couple miles from here, and it merges into Route 202. And where it merges, it goes from two lanes down to one. That's the same merge that people in the southeastern Pennsylvania make thousands of times every day. All across the region, people do that without problem. But last Wednesday, as Bianca was merging down from two lanes to one, there was a man in a red pickup truck also merging down. And they jockeyed for position. And he wasn't happy. So he pulled out a gun and shot Bianca in the head. The driver of the red pickup truck turned out to be 28-year-old David Desper from Pennsylvania. He showed up at the police station with his lawyer. Desper refused to testify but agreed to a search of his house. The man also told them where his pickup truck was. Desper was arrested and charged with taking the life of Bianca Roberson. The police found the pickup truck at the place indicated by Desper. Stickers on the side windows, the damage, and the rims left no doubt it was the vehicle the police were looking for. During a search of Desper's home, investigators also found a gun the man used to shoot Bianca Roberson in the head. The police were sure they found the culprit. However, the motive of this crime remained unknown. Over 800 heartbroken family, friends, and community supporters gathered at the St. Paul's Baptist Church in the borough of Westchester, located 25 miles west of Philadelphia on July 7th for her homegoing service. A church banner proclaimed patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. During the funeral service, among those who paid tribute were her brothers, officials from Bayard Ruston High School, where she had just graduated, the chief admissions officer at Jacksonville University, which she was to attend in the fall, and friends. What emerged was a portrait of an extraordinary young woman. Speaker after speaker extolled her brilliance and virtues. In providing the eulogy, Pastor Wayne Croft Sr. linked the shooter with the likes of George Zimmerman and Michael Dunn. Zimmerman, who shot black teenager Trayvon Martin to death in Florida in 2012. Zimmerman was acquitted of murder in 2013. Dunn shot Jordan Davis, another black teenage male, to death in Florida in 2012. A verbal encounter over music from the car the teenager was in escalated when Dunn fired shots into the vehicle, even as it was driving away. He was convicted and sentenced to life plus 90 years in prison. Whether Bianca's murder was road rage or racial, it doesn't matter right now to the black community. All we know is that we lost another brilliant young black star. Another good sister is gone, said the pastor. At the trial, which took place in September 2018, they asked David Desper to explain what was the motive for the crime he committed. Instead of answering this question, he asked for forgiveness from the Roberson family. The idea of facing their daughter's alleged killer was not something either of Bianca's parents was looking forward to doing. Rodney had ordered t-shirts with the image of Bianca's face on the front for family members and friends to wear as they gathered at the Chester County Government Services Center. They also had bracelets inscribed with the words, Bianca Roberson, a rose in God's garden, and a banner that read, Justice for Bianca Nicole Roberson, who was murdered on Wednesday, June 28, 2017. I don't know what my reaction will be when I see him, the guy who held the gun that shot my daughter. I know I'm not going to do anything stupid, Rodney said of Desper. He just took her dreams. He didn't have that right, Michelle said. I can't get her back. I need to get her back, and I can't. 
I need to comfort her and I can't. I'm her mom and I can't do that. And he's still here, she continued through more tears. He gets to talk to his parents, to hug them. He is 28. She is just 18, just a baby. The prosecutor suggested that the reason for the traffic conflict was that Bianca did not give way to Desper when the two lanes merged into one. Then he rolled down the window on the passenger side and pulled the trigger. Realizing the consequences of his actions, Desper fled the scene, left his pickup truck with a friend in Pennsylvania, and tried to escape to Delaware. But when his sketch and the distinctive features of his pickup truck appeared in the news, he decided to hire a lawyer and turn himself in. The police studied his social media accounts and interviewed his friends but found no evidence it was a bias-motivated crime. Therefore, they didn't charge the man with a hate crime. District Attorney Hogan added there was no indication that we're aware of that this was a race crime or a hate crime. Many begged to differ with that assertion. Before the sentencing, the defense called Desper harmless and an almost juvenile 28-year-old who in his spare time played with cars. They called him a big kid and argued that Desper essentially gave the government the case because he turned himself in. The defense said Desper was driving home when a car came up on him and startled him. He took the gun and fired it. They said there is no monster or menace. If you're a 28-year-old man operating a motor vehicle with a loaded firearm, you're not a big kid, objected prosecutor Chris Miller. It turned out, Desper's own mother had shared a Facebook post about police looking for the man who murdered Bianca Roberson. She'd later learn it was her own son. Wendy Desper said she has love for Bianca's family and prays for her. I'm sorry for what my son did, she said as her son sobbed. Rodney Roberson struggled to speak through tears as he addressed his daughter's killer. My questions for the defendant are simple. Why in God's name did you shoot my daughter? Because she was young? Because she was black? Because she was a girl? Because you wanted to go first on the road? Because you had a bad day? All my dreams for Bianca were coming true. Until the day that the defendant murdered my daughter, he added. All I have left of Bianca is my memories. David Desper pleaded guilty to third-degree deprivation of life. The court sentenced him to 40 years in prison with the possibility of applying for parole in 20 years. Judge Anne Marie Wheatcraft brushed away tears as she announced the sentence, telling Desper, I don't believe you were afraid, I believe it was anger. The 20 to 40-year sentence county Judge Anne Marie Wheatcraft imposed is the maximum for that grade of homicide. Desper attempted to appeal the sentence, but his appeal was denied.